Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we have a lot of contracts that we could do, but first it looks like we have sort of a Drez opportunity here, uh, Drez Trans Window. Actually we're probably a little bit past it, I time warped too much, but it's the first one. There's an Eve Trans Window coming up and then a Duno one, uh, but we did Eve last time, well last few times, so probably we're just gonna go straight for the Duno one. But we have this contract, build a new surface outpost on Drez. We can send that on its way, it'll probably take a fair amount of time to get there. That's gonna be interesting, because Drez is actually difficult, sort of, to get to. It doesn't, uh, it's not as far out as Jewel, but Jewel helps a lot, and it's got all those fancy moons doing their gravitational things, so... That's actually easier. Elu can be so far out that you're going pretty slow when you get there. Drez, you're still going pretty fast, so you have to use a lot of fuel to slow down, and it doesn't have an atmosphere. So, we, it's a complicated thing, at least we don't have to send a Kerbal with it. Facility supporting 12 Kerbals, Viewing Cupola, Mobile Processing Lab. I mean, I suppose it'd be helpful to send a Kerbal, but for our first try, I think we'll forego that. We just need a whole lot of fuel. So let me put it together and show you what I come up with. Okay, well I've uh, I've done a thing. This is obviously more meant to be stylish than strictly speaking functional. I mean, it's got capacity for 12 Kerbals, 13 actually. Uh, I, I guess that's not particularly lucky, but yep, we've got the Cupola Mobile Processing Lab as requested. Uh, two hitchhiker storage containers and the Mark II lander can. Mark II lander can's windows are sort of facing down for some reason. Might help with landing? I don't know. The cupola is probably better for that. But we have to land it on Drez. And so I've got little spark engines. Right now, full of fuel, the thrust weight ratio with respect to uh, Drez is 2.43. And of course, it'll deplete fuel. Um, hopefully, we're not going to be... I mean, uh, the landing burn is not going to take much of this delta V, so that that's probably gonna include the capture burn. Uh, we'll see. And uh, so we have enough thrust weight ratio, and we've got 2,500 meters per second of delta V or thereabouts. I've put in here and I've unlocked uh, those little uh, deployable science units for Drez, but of course we're not sending any people yet. So those will be just there ahead of time. So we've got the communication unit. We've got the EVA repair kit just in case, which is one. Uh, the Goob ED monitor, the seismometer. We've got the photovoltaic panel, three of those. Uh, hopefully we'll be sending a good enough engineer uh, in order to improve upon the science power. Uh, we are not sending a weather and analyzer. Uh, we do have an uh, experiment control station and one work lamp, so that's what we're sending there. Uh, now, the, as you can see, the well, I, it looks like I've changed the the or the um, position of stuff. Did I underfuel anything? Okay, so we're gonna make sure that the thrusters have. everything in line so that's hopefully gonna work out for us I don't actually know how it moved up because I had it in line before and I didn't think I added that much to this but then it changed on me so let's see oh look well that's gonna make things difficult isn't it the center of mass just decides to move about randomly I think the center mass ought to be here that's what I feel is right, but, um... Hmm... Well, that could be a problem, but that's why we're saying this uncrewed. <laughs> so, uh, but we have another problem in that mounting it on a transfer stage is going to be tricky because the center mass is down here because of the way I've made it sort of star tricky with the bottom pods, the nacelles, if you will. Uh, so... Yeah, that's an issue. And thinking about how to do that, I think we'll just straight put a tank at the bottom here. 
and we'll use uh, full size decoupler like that but we'll offset the engine based on the center of mass so showing how to do that I'm gonna have a full fairly large stage there I'm going to turn off the thrust on both sets of spark engines and then we're going to have let's see what's our mass right now 47 tons still I think since it's just going to be an in-space burn, the poodle, but we don't want that truss because we're going to be moving it. Oh god, it's, it just has a worse truss. That is a nice model though. Gosh darn it, I want to use that model. That's a very nice model. I didn't know we had that. Um, but we, uh, that's almost enough uh, fuel. Let's, let's go back to curb and thrust weight ratio, 0.5. Let's see, the skipper also has another model, right? Bear. So we need to offset it. So what we gonna do what we are going to do is move it like that. <laughs> it's weird. It's very weird. And actually we want an engine plate in this situation. But I think the gimbling should do the trick. <laughs> This is touchy as all heck, of course. This is not the best idea ever, but it could work. It'll, it has the benefit of being interesting. I've auto strutted these, of course, to root part. Uh, we'll need more fuel, though. We've uh, put this heavy engine on, but now this is 60 tons. So it sounds like we're going to, and this all has to get into orbit. So I'm just going to call this Drez. Base. And we gotta switch to the VAB again. We've got the cupola at the top again, which is not great for aerodynamics. I'm going to close its node off with a stack separator and a cone. Which looks weird, but we're gonna try and dispose of that. Mainsail heavy, maybe? But this is one of those wiggly situations, huh? The mainsail heavy can certainly get this to orbit delta V wise. I, I don't want to underfuel this. Oh, you know what? We don't need to underfuel this. We can put half the tank now. That was underfueled for looks because of the payload that we had before, but now the payload is just a straight stage, so it's not as bad. Well, you know, here goes nothing. Let's make sure no curve. Ah, Jeb snuck in again. Yep, we will see how it goes. Oh, we've got way too much mob propellant in the Mark II lander can. Uh, but changing that might change the balance of it. Hmm. I'm just going to leave it be for now so that I don't have to mess with the balance. We've got the Delta V anyway, I think. Uh, so throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. Now this stage is not burning right through the center of mass, but it also has awesome power, and <laughs> and it's a long way from the the top of the vehicle, so that helps. I did want to make sure that, yeah, that's draining last. Um, yeah, well, let's make sure that's... Uh, these could drain later, too. Okay. I sort of went steeper than I was intending. Though the thrust weight ratio on this is not, you know, huge, so... Might be the best thing to do to go steep. I'm going to try to let go so that I can change the view somewhat. Alright, booster set. Alright. So far, so good. Well, it's quite a plume. A very nebulous plume. Okay.
I'm gonna temporarily shut down so that I can get rid of the nose cone. And that stack separator should also be separated. Okay, good. Okay. So... Targeting Trez. Is this the right time, in fact? I remember 82 degrees was supposed to be the right time. Looks like we're going to have to make a complete orbit before going. And it's about 1,500 meters per second. That sometimes is a plane change maneuver that's necessary. Uh, it's 5 degrees, and we are not in the right place to do that right now. So we need that and then we'll need this. 740. Hmm. Drez really, really does not help when it comes to making orbit around it. Okay, well I'll take that side. Let's say we do this and we add a maneuver and whoa. Uh okay. Well that's something. 1700 so yeah this is gonna be rough and remind me about Drez and its escape velocity is 558 that would normally be what I expect for landing uh, in other words I use the escape velocity to judge how much I want for landing at a place a lot of the time uh, it's a good first approximation and so that's not too bad uh, so if we remember we had 2,500 in the landing stage so if we take uh, this amount and add in what I need for landing that's about right for that stage so otherwise we have about 2,000 and it looks like we'll need a little bit more than what we have with the skipper and the remaining mainsail so we'll have to start off with the landing stage, completing this burn as well. So that's interesting. It is going to be really tight. Still haven't got a probe core that can do maneuver hold. Very advanced function. Okay, and go. Oh, wobbly. Well, pretty soon we're going to find out whether the skipper can really point through everything properly. Right now, the mainsail is probably having some trouble with that. Uh, it is having some trouble with that. Let me put it that way. All right, but it cleared it. Okay, and let me have the skipper in partial power. Let me turn... Okay. Okay, well... It's weird, but it's going. We don't have a whole lot of communication support, so hopefully we'll be getting through this burn before we lose line of sight there. Fortunately, the skipper is super powerful. In retrospect, some RCS might have been helpful. Just the ports, since we have the mop propellant anyway. So if we spend a little bit more on the mid-course adjustment, does that help us on the capture burn? It's still costing quite a lot. Oh shoot, we needed a docking port? Oh no. I forgot about the docking port. Hmm. Well... Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we can intercept this and have a Kerbal put on the docking port, or we could use the claw. The claw is easier. We need to intercept this in, it says, let me see, what did it say for the sun? Dock two vessels on or around the sun. Well, on isn't happening. Uh, so we can knock that requirement out if we use a claw vessel to claw on a docking port so that this has that feature. Let's see if I can do that. This has gotten a little bit more complicated suddenly. 
So we have to get to a target that is currently very much on escape trajectory and we need to attach a claw, well, attach a docking port with the claw. So we've got a claw and a docking port because I don't want anything else attached to it. We've got the controller on here and so this will get it there and then the docking port will separate and then this can go on its, on its own way. And we have a big launcher. I've got a skipper at the bottom. I've got a terrier over here, and that's that. We're just going to try it out, and hopefully this will work out. We will see. I hope we don't get too far out. I've got a full solar panel. I just wanted to counterbalance the antenna as I normally do, so let's go. It might be easy to catch up with it. It might be hard to catch up with it. It's right there, but we actually want to catch up with it in interplanetary space in order to fulfill that contract assuming that the that the contract will be satisfied that we're docking the two vessels I don't know if if we're strictly docking the two vessels with the claw I think so so anyway throttle up SAS is on and launch Bobcat was an option but uh, not if I wanted it to look like this. We'd have to make it shorter. The Bobcat can't lift uh, three of these tanks. It can do two, I think. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I've misjudged how stable this is going to be. Uh, pump fuel in that tank a little bit later, please. We're going much steeper than I want to, but I've put overwhelming Delta V, so darn it. Let's just not destroy ourselves. If it had just all solid rocket motors, it'd be like a Vega rocket in shape. Well, we're getting pretty high on the apoapsis. Let's separate the fairings. Get stuff out. It is, of course, a uh, grabbing unit junior. Well, we're gonna need the engine to help us turn. We only have the reaction wheel in the tiny little probodobodyne. Uh, let's deorbit this stage. We'll try to do that first. Hmm, we may temporarily lose communication like this. We've only got a line back to the desert launch site, yeah. Oh, well we've picked up the KSC anyway, so we're good now. Well, okay. Let's let's see with that much. I don't know. Because it's not showing me anything going forward. We need to get out of uh Kerbin SOI first, I think. Oh, we're uh we're going too fast. We're gonna overtake the Dres base pretty soon. Well, maybe not. No, let's see. But I don't like this radial component. If we could sort of get a little bit more parallel. Okay, we've sort of parallelized ourselves. Oh, we are going too fast. Okay. Maybe I should just try and intercept it, like, right before it exits. And then we'll just wait. We'll loiter outside the two-kilometer range kind of thing. I have not done this sort of thing before. Well, there's an ascending node there. How much faster are we going? We're going 2,600. It's going 1,900, so we need to pull back more. Okay, we'll try that. So, okay, we've got an ascending node right there. We are going a little bit faster. So, I'm going to slow down just a tad. We are getting closer. We are 1,094 kilometers away. Now we're just 1 meter per second faster, 1.5. Just make sure we're getting closer. But not too close, we want to exit the SOI first before getting into render range of it. Okay, we uh... 61 kilometers right now and 
40 was about the closest we got. So... Gosh, it's hard to turn this thing. Because the only reaction we have is the little... Obadobadine reaction wheel. We're slowly getting closer right now. And now we're going further away. But now I'm gonna wait until we're outside Kerbin SOI. We're in interplanetary space now. So, now to fulfill the rendezvous. So we've got an encounter there. And we just need that to be within two kilometers. That'll do. We didn't even need the ant engine stage. We could pump some extra fuel into the thing though. You know, whatever we have left, we can put into it. We should have sent more fuel then. <laughs> Instead of just sending this little dinky thing. Well, let's see. Rendezvous two vessels in orbit of the sun, we've done. Now... It says, it actually says, with a docking port or a claw to achieve this goal, so... We should be able to do that. Well, we have some fuel in here, and I don't want to... Completely neglect it, so we'll try and bring it along, but our RCS ports are not going to be in the best location. Okay, that's where I want it. Just going forward now. We don't want to follow the target at all. Because that's out in front. I guess we can control from this core and make that the target point, but we're close enough now that it doesn't matter. Okay, we've attached. Okay, so I'm going to transfer what fuel we can. We did get the contract done, so... Not intending to do that contract. Oh, we've got some things in the way. Uh, let's enable crossfeed here. Temp we better remember not to let that stay that way, but... Oh, uh, something else is in the way. Oh, there's a docking... Uh, no, sorry, uh, decoupler here. There we go. Oh, well, something's preventing me from transferring fuel. Maybe the Little Claw does not have fuel transfer capability? I don't know. Well, I'm puzzled. I don't know what's stopping me from transferring fuel. I guess we can lighten the mod propellant load a bit. Uh, that transfers just fine. Well, uh, it's a shame not to be able to transfer the fuel out. Maybe it is the claw, and the claw only does mod propellant? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand. But we're going to leave the claw in the docking port there. And yeah, I guess I can't transfer anything else, so decouple. And it looks like we're in a bad orientation for the sunlight. Overspent a bit on this rescue vehicle. Well, rescue, I mean docking port attachment vehicle. So now this is okay for for Drez. Yes, it's got everything now. Should have checked that earlier. Well, I don't know what to do about this thing, but um, it's not very useful in its current orbit. We should have had like a relay antenna on it, but we did not. It's just gonna hang out, I think. Okay, we need to go to a tracking station to see what comes first, the Duna window or this thing's uh, at next adjustment, the next maneuver node. And I think that maneuver node will be before we get a Duna opportunity. Okay, and burn. And we're gonna have to do a reorientation to finish this burn. Uh, it's getting a little bit hard to control, so it's not quite burning through the center of mass anymore. Oh wait, 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 what are you using? Why is the delta V zero? Oh, it started to use this fuel. Oh gosh. That's not efficient. I I I forgot to disable cross feed again. Ah That might hurt. 
Well, let's see if this works. Oh, thrust limit. <laughs> well, we might want some thrust from them. I had thrust limited them when I wanted to see how the skipper would be pointing through. Only 2,372 now. We could get into orbit around Drez. The question is whether it'll be safe for, oh, safe for landing. Okay, that's good enough. Periapsis at Drez. We've got 2,200. Let's see what it takes to capture. Mm. It's close. It's tough to say. All right, so it's on its way. It's going to enter Drez SOI in 114-ish days. And by that time, we need to do our Duna missions. So this time we will sort of split it up and I'll try and launch the Duna missions at the Duna window. And we'll catch up with that Drez mission later. But uh, for now, I think I'll wrap it up here because I'll have to introduce the Duna vehicles. And I want to do something ambitious for Duna. For especially recovering those modules from orbit of Ike and Duna. I'm thinking of a space plane, so... We will get to that in the next video, I think. So this has been a little bit of excitement, but a relatively short thing. And we'll look forward to the Duna launches next time. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.